Hi, welcome to the course on measure theory. This is the fourth session, though rigorous measure theory starts from this session. But I hope that all of you have gone through the first three sessions. Actually, it's a two and a quarter. That will give you, that will make you better prepared for the course. Okay. And uh, the, I, I don't have any specific reference. Okay, except a forthcoming book of mine, ours, by myself and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dharmati Sheetal from ISR Thiruvanandavaram. Okay, so let us get started. Yeah, and if you are new to the channel, this is the, my channel address. And anything related to any of my video lectures, please write to this email ID. Don't use any other email ID. And in the subject matter also, it will be good if you mention which topic, so it will be easier for people to attend to that. And you can download the list of videos on my channel from this site, or you can scan it and search for list of videos. The list gives a description, the links of videos, and the videos are arranged arranged in preferred order of viewing so that you can learn it easily. They will be periodically updated, but I request those of you who have seen this list, prepare an Excel sheet and try to update it and send it to me so that, okay, my work will be easier, okay. One of the things you can do it that, okay, let's get started. But, you know, like any theory of integration, okay, let me go back. Any theory of integration, the major stumbling block for many students is the LUB and GLB, the notion of least upper bound and greatest lower bound, or in very fancier notation, supremum and infimum. Because if your real analysis course started with metric spaces and concentrated on continuity, etc., it's very li likely you are confidence level in these concepts is very low okay so my request will be to go back to my youth channel and look for odd upper bounds lower bounds lub glb etc just to learn those things okay I, even though in this course i will try to be i will try to give them but it will be somewhat brief so if you want to have an in-depth knowledge or acquire a good level of confidence my suggestion will be go back to my videos on them, okay? So, the basic idea, so this is going to be, as I said, Lebesgue outer measure, the first lecture. So, the basic idea is that I suppose I had given a subset E of R or more generally, we may even talk of E in R K. Okay, then I want to define the notion of length. Notice that if J is an interval of any kind, let's say fi let us start with finite intervals. Etc. We know what is meant by the length of this interval, namely B minus A, right? So we want to extend this notion of length to arbitrary subsets of B. In this case, we have to talk about arbitrary. So here again, I will come to that a little later. I don't want to get confused with that now. Okay, we will come to that. So how do I do that? The, the trick is to put E, okay, look at coverings Jn, okay, as n varies. It may be finite or countable covering. When I say countable, you know that it, it also says finite also included. But I don't want, see, I, that's why I didn't write n, n, n. Because that means it's countably infinite, it may not be the case, okay? So, it's, suppose it's a countable covering of E, where Jn's are open intervals, okay? That is, let me assume Jn is of the form An, Bn. I'm assuming at present finite, okay? And I'm assuming E is contained in union Jn. Okay, 
this n as I said may be a very over a finite set n equal to 1 to some capital n or n equal n equal to 1 to infinity okay but simply I will write it here after only e is contained in union j n uh, n varies okay whatever is the indexing set right okay so this is what we will look at then this is you see that so this is where it will be easier to look at a subset e of r k let us say r2 so there an interval for me is an in, okay product of intervals j1 and j2 j r intervals so i will call this again as interval and in the case of r k it will be j1 times j2 times j k in r k these are all intervals okay then in the case of n equal to 2 k equal to 2 then uh, j is a rectangle and k equal to 3 j is a rectangular parallel pipette okay it is easier to write ppd okay right so notice that sides of j are parallel to the coordinate axis that is for example a cross b may be like this is open so just i think of it as a dot 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 dot, dot. okay this will be a1 b1 this will be a2 b2 etc okay the sides are parallel to the axis so how do i define length of j in this case an obvious thing it is the length of i equal to 1 to k of length of j i but in the case of k equal to 2 we call it area in the case of k equal to 3 we call it volume okay or in the case of k anything we call it k dimensional length k dimensional volume or k dimensional length but i will simply call it length okay it is easier so that if you are if you are not comfortable with multi dimensions higher dimensions you can assume k equal to 1 okay so how do i define so i have this e contained in our k okay then what i do is i look at rectangles which are parallel to this x axis cover them by means of count w mini like that <laughs> okay <clears throat> then i have an approximate idea about the length remember length is area or volume length of v approximate is approximately will be less than of course it's going to be less than equal to summation length of j j n as n varies find all their lengths that is the areas add them up this is it okay so if i want to get a good approximation what i have to do I have to take all possible coverings and take the minimum but analysis knows that no we know that minimum may not make sense so we use the word infimum or glb so let us go to the definition now so if e is a subset of or k right let us look at c of e c of e is the collection i where i is a collection j n sorry collection j n said that j n are open intervals when do i say open interval if j is j1 times j k i claim each of them is open in r so these are the open intervals and e is contained in union j n you understand that so what does this mean it is covering of e coverings of e by means of countable countable family 
we have open intervals right so if i belong to c of v i denote by length of i this is just a notation this is just a definition okay it's not length just for want of notation i'm just using it length of jn n varies remember i has a countable collection of open intervals this is a set so i'm just i would write it carefully okay when i write sequence you may think it's infinite that's why okay length of i is by definition look at all the individual lengths and add them up notice that this is a length of jn they are all non negative therefore this is in a series of non negative terms okay therefore it may converge so or it may converge. that is if i look at the partial sums okay suppose sm or the mth partial sums then sms are increasing and sms may be bounded above by some cause positive constant m for all m or it is unbounded if it is bounded above then the lub of this sm is called the sum which we denote by a length of jn you see that how much analysis is needed without knowing all these things people jump into they have problem or if it is unbounded we will simply say summation l of jn is infinite okay so pause review proceed okay this what we want to claim is this object makes sense in the extended real number system that is zero to infinity that the infinity is just a symbol it only says the partial sum of the series is unbounded okay we define the sum to be infinite okay so this always makes sense <laughs> so now i want to define the outer measure of e this is the notation standard notation m star of e to be the glb of length of i where i varies over c of e okay take some time don't just do that what are we looking at go back to our geometric way so given any i okay a countable collection of v then we have the length of v approximate length which is some summation length of jn right so this naturally i guess you can see it is very likely to overshoot the actual length of v actual area of v so what do i do i try to take the minimum so so cover e with all possible countable coverings okay and each of the covering i have the notion of a length of that covering and then i choose the one which is the least okay that is the infimum or greatest lower bound okay so let me recall what is the greatest lower bound okay suppose a is a subset of r okay a real number alpha is a lower bound and of a if for all x in a alpha must be less than equal to x this means this is alpha ah, okay x must be here if x is an element of a it must be here x must be greater than equal to alpha okay and i say alpha is the glb I, it is going to be unique so i don't want to stop to prove such thing is the glb of a if two conditions are satisfied alpha is an upper bound a uh, sorry lower bound of a and two you should like different glb so it comes out very naturally if beta is a lower bound of a i want to be alpha is the greatest that is among all the lower bounds it must be the greatest it should be bigger so what should be the relation then 
beta is less than or equal to alpha. <coughs> you understand that? So if alpha is this, then alpha dash less than alpha is also lower bound for a. The a must be somewhere here, right? So what do I want to say is choose the one which is the maximum in some sense intuitively, the biggest among all lower bounds. Okay, if this is the first time you are learning LUB GLB, this GLB is also called infimum. So one usually denotes alpha equal to GLB of A, GLB of A or infimum of A. Sometimes you don't put bracket, you may also write GLB of A or infimum of A. Okay. So, if this is the first time you are learning infimum supremum, pause, review, proceed. Okay. Now, if you are very kind of a diligent reader, okay, you should ask the question. Given a subset E of RK, how do I know C of E is not empty? Usually, measure theory books will not even measure, okay, mention this object, <laughs> right? What does it mean? That is, given any E, okay, does there exist a countable collection J n, okay, J n are open intervals such that E is contained in union J n. You understand that? If I cannot find any such countable collection, then C is empty. You understand that? This is the count coverings, countable coverings of E that will be empty. Yeah. So, how do I know it is not empty? Because to define this, okay, to define this, see this set, suppose this is empty. Suppose this is empty. Okay. If this is empty, okay, then this set is empty. This set of real numbers is empty. And for empty set, we do not want to define GLB, LUB. Okay. Right, so I have to make sure to make sense GLB of this number exists. I have to make sure that this has to be this set is non empty, therefore, this set of real numbers is non empty, and hence GLB can be defined. Do you understand this? See, these are the subtle things which are usually never explained. So, let us just take care, okay. Again, pause, review, proceed. Okay, this follows. I expect to uh, the viewers of this are usually an MSc student, okay, MSc student, so that you must already learn some kind of topology, basic ideas. You know that R K is second countable, okay, but that's not enough because usually you will uh, use it with respect to uh, open balls, okay, or some sort of thing. Now what I want to say is look at look at Q power K. Okay, in R K, right? Then let us look at R as an element of Q plus power K, where Q plus is positive rationals. That is R equal to R one to R K. Each R J is positive, right? Therefore, I have something like this. The picture will be something like this. I have this. Okay, this is my x, y, this is my q. Okay, I am looking at r2. Then what do I do? Then I can go up to in the x direction up to r1 direction. This is r1. x minus r1, x minus x plus r1. And this is in the y direction. Okay, y plus y minus r2, y plus r2. So look at this. Okay. So that's what I want to look at. So let us look at this collection B, which consists of all. Let, let me do that. Let me just look at the J, A, R. Let A be an element here. J, A, R is set of all x in R K, so that modulus x K minus A K is less than R K. This is the this kind of rectangle. These are all intervals. You can see that. Then this collection J R as A varies over Q power K and R varies over Q plus power K 
this is a countable basis okay these are all easy to check okay again easy to check later you verify this right this immediately tells me if you give me any set E I can always find subfamily from this collection so that control subfamily I so that okay is containing union Jn, where Jn is I. Okay. Therefore, what I have shown is this C of V is not empty for any subset E of R K. So, when K equal to one, try to understand what this means. You are starting with x rational number and looking at x minus R to x plus R. That's all. Okay, and you know this is a countable basis. Okay, remember countable basis deals only with open sets. Okay, it has meaning open sets, but how do I know I'm going to have this for R? All right. Okay, notice that E is contained in R K. Now R K is contained in union you know, J R. Right. Therefore, there is at least one countable collection. Okay, right. Please pause, review, proceed. So, what have we done is that given any subset A of R or RK, okay, I have shown that there exists always a countable number of countable family of open intervals such so that E is contained in their union. Therefore, what I call C of P, countable coverings of P by means of open intervals, that is non-empty set. Therefore, I have defined what is meant by outer measure. And first thing I should notice is, outer measure is always non-negative. Why? Because what is outer measure? Outer measure is GLB. So, let me go back because many of you will have problem if this is the first time you are coming to me. Okay, let us look at that. This is how, see, this each of the length of i is greater than or equal to 0. Right? Each of this is greater than or equal to 0. I do not want that, I wanted this. Right? And therefore, 0 is a lower bound for this set. But the the GLB, therefore, 0 is a lower bound and M star is the greatest lower bound. Therefore, what do I know? 0 is less than equal to M star IP. So, you see that we are trying to prove everything rigorously. We just do not feel, say something out of gut feeling. Yeah? Okay. Therefore, the first observation is, first observation is M star is Okay. Since the length of i is greater than or equal to 0, okay, m star of e is greater than or equal to 0 for all e, subset of rk. That is the first observation. Okay. Second observation is monotonicity. Suppose a is a subset of b, right? Let us look at c of b, a and c of b. Is there any relation? So, this may be my a and this may be my b, right? So, if I start with any i here, i covers b, therefore, i certainly covers, it is a countable covering by means of open intervals which covers b and hence it covers c of a, right? Therefore, what is the relation? The relation is c of a is a subset of c of b, right? Now, this is the next observation one has to learn about this. 
this is observation or a fact about GLB. If A and B are subsets of real numbers and suppose alpha is the GLB of A and beta is the GLB of B, beta, right? Then what is the relation between alpha and beta? Notice that if you start with any x in A, right, then x also belong to B, okay. But beta is the greatest lower bound, therefore I know beta is less than or equal to x. And this is true for all x in A. Therefore, I claim, therefore it follows beta is a lower bound of A, but alpha is the greatest lower bound, therefore beta must be less than or equal to alpha. Okay. Yeah, again, if this is the first time you are looking at such things, pause, review and then proceed. Therefore, let us go back. Now, A is a subset of B and B is a subset of RK. Right? Now, therefore, I have C of B, C of A is contained in C of B. Sorry. <laughs> C of B is contained in C of A. Every covering of B is a covering of A. Right? Therefore, let us look at this object length of uh, I in C of B. This is a subset of length of I, I in C of A. Right? Every take any covering of B, then it is also covering of A. Therefore, that L of I belong to this. Right? Therefore, this is something like a subset, this is a subset of real numbers, this is also a subset of real numbers, okay. Maybe it is, remember again it may be vulnerable. Then I want to look at GLB, okay. The, in, the GLB of this set, of this set is your M star of B and the, the GLB of this set is your M star of A, right. And then subset is contained in this. What do I conclude now? This is greater than or equal to B. Please understand, go slowly. Okay, these are the things you know teachers write notes, you simply follow without understanding. So this is a subset of numbers and that is contained in that. Therefore, this GLB will be greater than or equal to this GLB. But this GLB by definition is M star of B. This GLB M star of A. Therefore, we prove what is called monotonicity of the outer measure. What is that? If A is a subset of B, okay, then M star of A is less than or equal to M star of B. Okay, pause, review, proceed. Okay, right. Now let's go to the third one. <coughs> This is the second observation. So, two observations we have made. The third thing is, suppose E is a subset of R. To start with, let me stick to R, right? Let me fix your real number X in R. Let me look at the translate X plus E or E plus X. What is this by definition? This is by definition, set of all Y plus X. Maybe I will write A so that it will be easier. A and a okay x plus a as x varies over e yeah so in rk again the same thing if e is a subset of rk and a is a vector in rk then e plus a is again the same way these are vector addition now so pictorial what does it mean this may be my E and this may be my A, okay. I translate it, the origin is translated, so I translate by this something similar, okay. Let us look at a very concrete example 
so that we will understand. Suppose my E is, I will just start with closed, but you can also take any kind of interval E, alright. So now suppose alpha is a real number. Then I want to know what is alpha plus E. This by definition is X plus alpha where X is in AB, right. But what is this object? This object is nothing other than, notice that since x belongs to a b, therefore a is less than equal to x less than equal to b, add alpha to both sides, a plus alpha is less than equal to x plus alpha less than equal to b plus. b plus alpha, right. Therefore, this is contained in the interval a plus alpha to b plus alpha. One can also prove they are equal, okay. Prove this. this is a trivial exercise. Suppose y belong to that, I want to write it as x plus alpha, right, for x in a b, okay. How will I do that? Therefore, my x must be y minus alpha. Now, y belong to this, therefore, a plus alpha less than or equal to y less than or equal to b plus alpha, therefore, subtract a minus alpha from both sides, then a is less than or equal to y minus alpha less than or equal to b, but that is my x. So, I have proved they are equal, okay. Pause, review, proceed. This is very important for what we want to do. So, what you have shown, is alpha plus a b is a plus alpha b plus alpha for any real number alpha in R. Therefore, length of this object is length of this object which is b plus alpha minus a plus alpha which is equal to b minus a which is length of j, length of a b. Right. Now, in R k also something similar happened. Analysis is true. Okay. I do not want to do this. I leave it as an exercise for those who want to do much better. Okay. Master the subject, they should do it. That is, if A is a vector in R k, E is a subset, okay, J is an interval in R k, then A plus J length equal to length of J, okay. So, check this, this is an exercise, okay, for any aspiring student. Okay, exactly you have to go back to the same kind of logic. Okay, now come back. So, we will stick to only now k equal to 1, okay, so that everybody can follow this what I am doing. So, let us look at. So, I have a subset E of R, okay, A a real number, then I would like to prove something similar. A of V, M star of this is same as M star of E, that is the outer measure of the translate it is outer measure of the translate. Equal to outer measure of E. Notice that in our first session on intuitive ideas about measure theory, this is one of our requirements. When I buy a piece of cloth in the shop, come back to the tailor shop to my home, the length should remain the same. Just because I translate it somewhere shop to my home or to the tailor shop, it should not change. The length should not change. That's what it says. Okay. Now, how do I prove that? Okay, this is observ this is the third observation. That is measure of a plus e equal to measure of e for any subset E of R. Similar result will be true in R k, but I will now I am not going to prove that here. So, how do I prove that? The point I want to look at is, I want to look at C of A plus E, the, all the countable coverings of A plus E 
and all the coverings of V. Is there any relation? <laughs> right? So, just to imagine this picture. So, I have these coverings. Okay, I translate this, the picture may not look like this, it is a translated thing. Okay, I can simply translate these also. Do you understand this? Okay, if I translated this to this point, I can translate each of this interval also exactly by this. This is the two dimensional picture, that is why I want to look at RK because in one dimension I cannot draw pictures very well. Right, okay. Have you understood this? So, what is the relation? The relation is if I is belong to C of E, it is an open countable open covering of E, I will denote by A plus I to be the countable covering A plus Jn, where Jn is a covering in I. Do you understand this? Again, think carefully, do not be bogged down by the notation. So, when I belong to I, what does it mean? It is I is a countable family of open intervals, right. So, I know how to translate open intervals, right. Now, what I want, is this countable? This is countable, right, obvious. Now, I claim this is, this belong to C of A plus E, that is, this one covers this. Okay, this is this this is a countable covering. This is countable, of course, a covering. Of course, they are all each translate of any open interval. We had already seen it's an open interval. Therefore, these are all open interval. Then now, what do I want to show? They cover. But that is very easy. Why? Start with any y in A plus E. Then I know there is a x so that y is A plus x. Right? Now x belong to E and E is contained in union J n, therefore there exists n such that x belong to J n, right. Therefore, my x plus A belong to A plus J n, but A plus A n, J n belongs to A plus I. So, what do you think I have proved? Given any y, okay, given any y, in A of V, I have found an N such that this Y X plus A belong to A plus I G N. That is, I have shown that A plus E is contained in union N A plus J N. Okay, pause, review, proceed. So, what I have shown? So, the converse is also true. That is, if you give me I in C of A plus E, then there exists an I dash in C of E such that I is A plus I dash. Why, how do I do that? Suppose my J and belong to I, then what do you think I should look at? I should look at minus A plus J n. This collection as n where is, this is my I dash and this is an, this belong to C of E. Okay. Do not take it for granted, please check. Okay. I will pause the video and check it. Check it. Many of you will have the tendency to accept it you do not accept. Okay? Please go through it. Okay? So, now next thing comes. Now, next question is, what is the relation between length of i and length of i plus, I do not remember a plus i, length of a plus i. Right? That is the way I denoted. Yeah, a plus i. Okay, what is the length of i? 
length of i by definition is length of jn. If my i is the collection jn, this is this. And what is this? This by definition length of a plus jn. But remember length of a plus jn we already know is each one of them equal to length of jn. Therefore, it is equal to length of jn. Therefore, what I have concluded? Length of i is length of a plus i. Okay. Pause. Review. Proceed. So, what you have shown is there exists a bijection between C of E and C of A plus E and the but important thing is because it is bijection let us look at this set of real numbers okay length of i i is very so c of e okay and length of i okay maybe you want to write i and i dash okay the length of i dash and i dash belong to c of a plus e but we know any length of i dash is same as length of a plus i for some i in c of e. Right? But we know length of this we know is same as length of i i in c of e. Right? So this to so what the final thing upshot of all these things is length of i as i varies over c of e this set of extended real numbers is exactly equal to the set of i dash where i dash varies over c of a plus e. Okay, pause, review, proceed. Hence, hence GLB of this set equal this because this, these two sets of numbers are the same extended real number therefore the GLB of this set. But GLB of this set by definition is M star of E and GLB of this set by definition is M star of A plus E. So we have proved they are equal. So, starting from the definite outer measure, we already observed two few things. What are the things? First thing we observed is the outer measure of any set is non-negative. Okay, it may, it may be infinite. Okay, but non-negative. Second thing is it's monotone. Whenever a is a subset of b, then m star of a is less than or equal to m star of b. The third one is m star. The outer measure is translation invariant. That means if I take a subset e of and translate by a, then m star of e is same as m star of a plus e. Is that clear to you? But since just because I proved monotonicity, which I needed, for example, I got carried over and tried to prove translation invariance. Okay, I should actually have given the examples how to look at outer measures. Okay, some simple sets and their example. Okay, let us look at it now. I should have done it earlier. But I forgot. Okay, got carried over. Okay, so let us look at. So let us look at examples now. Suppose I have a single ten x. Okay, x is an R. Okay, and so this is my set E. What is m star of E? Intuition will immediately say it is zero, right? But let's prove it rigorously. Now, notice that for each natural number n, I have one collection i, i of n, which consists of only one element, namely x minus one by n, x plus one by n. This is the only thing. There is no n is not allowed to vary. Do you understand that? This is single term. Okay, this is a countable cover, and this cover consists of only one cover, and you see that. E is a subset of this union J n. Okay, there is only one element here. Therefore, it is containing 
x minus 1 by n, x plus 1 by n. Are you following? Yeah. Now comes the next one. Now let us look at this collection i n. Okay. This collection as now n varies over natural numbers. Remember each i n is a countable cover. How many elements are there in that countable cover? Only one element. Okay. Therefore, these are all. Okay. Each i n is an element of C of E. You understand? Now, therefore, this i n, n in n, is contained in C of E. Right? No, no. Now, therefore, let's look at length of this collection i n as n varies over n. This is a subset of length of i, i varies over C of E. Right? This is a subset. I'm for each of this covering, I am associating length of the covering. Length of the covering. Right? But what are these? This is 2 by n as n varies over n. Okay, this number is a subset of this number. This subset of real numbers is a subset of this number, right? Now, do you see that we are back to square one? The earlier observation is A is a subset of B, therefore GLB of this, this set is greater than or equal to GLB of this set. Yeah? But GLB of this 2, two upon n is 0. And that is GLB of this set, which is this is actually outer measure of E. But we know outer measure is always greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, outer measure of E is sandwiched between zero and zero. That means outer measure of E is zero. Okay. Pause. Review. Proceed. So, we will look at a second example, which actually I exit up. Okay? Now, suppose E is a subset of R, but as if E is countable, if you want countably infinite. It could also be finite, but let us look at it. Just countable is good enough. Okay? So, let me write E as, let us say, Xn. This n may be finite, it may vary only finitely many numbers or it may be all of natural numbers, right? That's why it is countable, right? Now, for each xn, okay, I look at, for each one, I will I look at, for each k in n, I look at a cover ik. The cover ik consists of this thing. Let us, so, remember this is my x, x1, this may be x2. This may be x3. What I am going to do is, I am going to, for each k, I am going to surround this by, okay, something like, given any epsilon, positive, okay, I am going to surround this by epsilon by 2 to the power k. Okay, it is epsilon by epsilon, okay, by 1 if you want, and epsilon squared, and epsilon to the, by 2 by 3. Therefore, the collection I am going to look at, let me under, write this, I am going to write this x k minus epsilon by 2 to the power k and x k plus epsilon by 2 to the power k. Uh, let me sorry, x e n. Okay, let me, I think I am getting confused, this is x 1 is epsilon, for each k I want yeah, this is okay. So, two, yeah, xk, that's correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me retract. Okay. Let me look at, there is nothing to do with k. Let me retract. Let epsilon be positive. Okay. Be given. Okay. Let us look at this interval, xk minus epsilon by 2 power k, xk plus epsilon by 2 power k. Okay. This collection as k varies over natural number, this is, this belong to C of E. Right? This is a countable current thing. Right. Now, <coughs> so call this I. Okay? For epsilon, I have given this. For any epsilon, I am looking at a countable open cover. 
right okay now what is length of ik that is by definition summation length of these intervals the length of this interval x k minus epsilon by 2 power k x k plus epsilon by 2 power k that will be summation 2 epsilon by 2 to the power k and therefore is going to be epsilon by 2 to the power k minus 1 k equal to 1 to infinity I hope this is equal to epsilon or something to do with epsilon you understand that therefore length of i epsilon is less than or equal to r equal to epsilon for here right are you following yeah the picture was easy that's why I was able to recover my wrong attempt okay now let us look at this collection i epsilon for each epsilon positive this is a subset of c of e because each one of them is a countable collection of open intervals it's an open cover therefore this is contained that right therefore again we do the same trick that's now let's look at length of i epsilon as epsilon over greater than 0 okay that's a subset of length of i as i varies over c of e now take the glb on both sides then this is okay these are all simply epsilon this set is nothing other than epsilon where epsilon is positive therefore the glb is 0 but this glb is m star of e yeah but m star of e is greater than or equal to 0 therefore what i have shown is 0 is greater than or equal to because this is a subset therefore remember if a is a subset of b glb of a is greater than or equal to glb of b therefore this is greater than or equal to 0 0 is greater than or equal to m star of e which is greater than or equal to 0 therefore what i have concluded m star of e is 0 just stop here well, look at what have you achieved you have shown that if e is any countable subset of r its outer measure is zero right you understand therefore if i take the set of rationals in the closed interval zero one that is countable and hence its outer measure must be zero that is the intuitive the, the length of set of rations in 0 1 is 0 is it striking therefore again intuitively if things work out properly we do not know yet the outer measure of the set of irrational 0 1 should be 1 possibly we do not know yet right whenever you prove a theorem try to understand what it says and the other important thing about this proof is learn this proof well given epsilon we wanted a countable cover we didn't ch choose xk minus epsilon to xk plus epsilon right that will also be countable cover you understand but then the length of the covering will be summation epsilon infinitely many times therefore it will be infinity what we are very careful what did you do at each xk right we chose the length to be the length of the interval not length the radius of the interval to be epsilon by 2 to the power k therefore we can sum it and therefore the sum turns out to be epsilon or epsilon by 2 to epsilon i don't care something you can work it out i epsilon by 2 to the power k minus 1 that's okay right is it clear to you so that is what you have done okay is it interesting yeah so any kind of in particular any finite set will also be will have outer measure 0 we already proved any single turn has outer measure 0 okay i think this will be the best time to stop so but then if you are a really curious guy you should ask a nice question sir whatever you have done so far outer measure of you have produced examples of sets whose outer measure is 0 i would like to know whether there exists any set whose outer measure is positive right remember if you have gone through my first three videos in duty ideas what we want we want at outer measure this kind of measure the length 
should extend the notion of length of an interval. Therefore, if I take a finite interval, let's say 0, 1, then its outer measure should be 1, but we still have to prove. Why it needs a proof? Think about it. Okay, in the next lecture, we will start with that. Okay, we will say the outer measure of an interval a b will be less than or equal to b minus a. Why? Okay, you do I have time? Only leave four minutes, so let me just stop here. Okay, this one we will take up in the next session. Please go through it and review your GLB and I, wherever necessary needed, I had given the complete proofs, but go through it if this is the first time. It is better to revise twice or thrice. I still suggest if you want to master analysis, learn GLB, LUB, Infimum, Supremum, etc., etc. The best source is my videos on the on these topics. We will meet again. We will stop. Mm -hmm.